Egwati Egwata pe woli kakaki ko wole o fe joko lori aga kan e ti ro aga on lapa owo otun that was Kulawole Olawoye, an investigative journalist who rose to fame and riches after he started exposing the secrets of native doctors, kidnappers, and fake pastors such as Reverend King. Several people warned him to stop toying with Juju and things from the dark side, but he always said that he had no power over him. Sadly, Kulawole went out one day and did not return. He passed away after struggling with an illness for three months. Most people believe that it was all mysterious and that Juju was definitely involved. Personally, I'm not a superstitious person but I can't seem to wrap my head around what actually happened to this man. Now there are four theories regarding what might have actually happened to him but there isn't a lot of evidence so me and you are going to try to figure out the most probable one. But before we get into the story, kindly hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button too so you get notified whenever I drop a new story. Kulawole was a charming man who loved telling stories. He was stylish, dressed like royalty and had this bravado that made you want to drop whatever you were doing and just listen to him. He began his career as a regular journalist on a radio station in Ibadan where he anchored regular programs. Although he did his job diligently and often got recommendations from his bosses, he kept having this feeling that he wasn't doing enough. He had this burning desire that he was meant for so much more and sometimes he would just sit for hours staring into thin air. Just thinking, one day in 1992, he had a light bulb moment. He realized that a lot of bad and mysterious things were happening in the country and that while they were reported in the news, they were not told in story form. So he decided to start running a program where he would unveil the atrocities of wicked people and tell true mysterious stories, just like I do on my channel. He named the radio program Iriri Aye. It ran by 8 pm every Friday on the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. The program was so popular that people clustered around radio sets in street corners, homes, and electrician workshops just to hear him talk. He had a big break in the late 90s after he ran a program on Okorocha the teacher, a man who claimed to be a prophet and often used black eggs to perform miracles. But something quite unexpected happened after he aired the first episode. Threats started flying in from anonymous listeners wanting him to discontinue the program or be punished severely. But Kola Oli was a fearless man and considering the fact that countless people wanted to hear the stories badly, he went ahead to present it. The story did numbers and it increased the popularity of the program on the radio station but there were repercussions. The anonymous listeners started sending endless streams of threats and petitions and harassing the radio station in every way. Things got so heated that the station abandoned Kola Oli in a sly way to avoid backlash and problems but he was not deterred. He travelled up to Ogun State and continued the show under a new name called Nkombe. The program blew up real quick and rode Kulawole to great fame and riches. He rented spaces in the choicest parts of town, rode the latest cars and lived in a big house. He also expanded the business running TV programs and magazines where he continued showcasing true stories and revealing the secrets of evil doors. All sorts of rumors started flying around. Many people believed that he had dipped his hands into some diabolical things that made him prosper, but he insisted that he only relied on God Almighty. Threats kept flying in from all corners and in 2004, something happened. A mysterious fire gutted his ultra-modern studio on Bemisola Street, Ikeja, setting him back to the tunes of several millions. These events really hurt Kola Wole. But he promised reporters on the scene that he was going to bounce back stronger. After just a short while, he got a new property which he allegedly acquired for about 9 million naira in the Anifoushi area of Ikeja. His listeners were shocked to the bone and fresh rumors regarding his involvement in charm started spreading all over again. Kolawole was unbothered by the rumors. He paid and moved into a new apartment in Ogabi Court, a few meters away from a better bus stop. Now, this was where the worst happened. The rented apartment was in a large compound that had five other buildings in it and a huge mystical tree just by the corner. Now, according to the story, occupants of one of the buildings warned Kola Wole about the powers of the tree. They told him that the tree contained evil spirits that haunted and dealt with anyone who did anything bad to it. But Kola Wole did not believe, did not listen. He complained that the branches of the tree were causing great havoc to his house so he hired people to cut it down. Moments after he fell seriously ill and after three months he kicked the bucket. So what happened? We don't have enough evidence so we will explore four theories. Theory 1. Someone at the office might have poisoned him. I have heard stories about envious workers poisoning their colleagues but while it is a possibility, there is really no evidence to back it up. Plus, if that was the case, 
it is highly likely that the doctors would have discovered it during one of his several visits to the hospital. This theory appears to be weak so I guess we'll just rule it out. Theory 2 The mystical tree had evil spirits residing in it and they went after Kola Wuli for destroying their home. This theory is the most widely believed one up to date. If you ask anyone who knew Chief Kola Wuli about what happened to him, they would most likely tell you that a mystical tree was behind his demise. Is this theory true? Well, we know it isn't because the seed tree wasn't in front of his house and its branches weren't causing any havoc as the story goes. Also, residents of the compound and his family members confirmed that he had nothing to do with the felling of the tree. Talking to reporters, one of his relatives exact words was, It was not him that cut the trees. You can see that they are not even in front of his house. How could he have gone to cut trees in another man's house? Only God knows how this story started. Theory 3 Kulawuli was part of a secret cult that made him get rich quick and they had come for his soul because his time was up. Rumor had it that his cult members took off his head to their shrine after his demise as their rules demanded. Many of his radio listeners saw him as a mystical man so the rumor is widely believed. Well, this theory is false and we know because a line in state funeral was done for him and his body was intact. In fact, his family initially planned to give him a private burial but he decided to go public to quell the rumors. Theory 4 He departed through natural causes People who were close to him before his demise support this theory. His wife and close relatives have maintained that Kola Wole was suffering from a major illness. Now, this theory seems to be the correct one because the doctors he visited while ill support it as well. Moreover, most times people who don't have a clue about what's really going on in people's lives tend to just make stories up for clout or fun. But like I said before, nothing is set in stone. What do you think really happened to Kola Wole? Was his passing away in natural or was it due to mysterious circumstances? Can you let me know what you think in the comments?